Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the intestinal production of hydrogen gas, or H2 as a chemical, and this is going to be a process that's done by bacteria, not by humans, not by eukaryotic cells, but by bacteria in the small and large intestine. And this is ultimately going to lead us to uh, the generation of methane gas, a process called methanogenesis, something that also occurs in the intestines. But in order to generate methane in the small intestines, uh, you also have to have production of hydrogen gas because as we can see right here, which we'll get to, the hydrogen gas is actually used to generate reduced cofactors that are used in methanogenesis, and we'll cover that process in the next video. As for right now, this is going to be a fairly short video. We're just going to go over the uh, three-step enzymatic process to generate hydrogen. Now the first step right here is a long process, it's actually 10 enzymes, but it's glycolysis and hopefully we know at this point that glucose, once it's imported into a cell, can be converted by glycolysis into molecules of pyruvate. In fact, two pyruvate molecules per molecule of glucose. Now the pyruvate generated by glycolysis can do a number of things depending on the organism or the cell type. Uh, it can be transaminated to make alanine, an amino acid. It can be reduced into lactate in times of anaerobic stress or fermentation. It can actually be shunted into the mitochondria if it's a eukaryotic cell, and there it will undergo an oxidative decarboxylation uh, catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, and that gives you acetyl-CoA. But here in bacteria, whose goal is to produce hydrogen gas, we're going to encounter an enzyme that we probably haven't seen before. This is called formate C acetyltransferase, and it's actually named for the reverse reaction of what's happening here. So when pyruvate builds up, it will react with formate C acetyltransferase, and it'll actually give the bacteria an acetyl-CoA, which actually is normally what the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex does. And the acetyl-CoA will then be used by this particular bacteria. However, instead of just simply doing an oxidative decarboxylation and removing uh, this carbon right here where my mouse is a CO2, it'll actually be removed as formate, or in its protonated state, formic acid, as you may have heard of it. It turns out that formate is a precursor to two molecules, hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide, that are going to be used in methanogenesis, the production of methane, which we will cover in the next video. Now, first of all, um, the enzyme that catalyzes this breakdown of formate is formate hydrogen lyase. And uh, one of the products down here is carbon dioxide. Now, the carbon dioxide does not solely have to come from the formate. There's other sources of CO2. But in any case, carbon dioxide, including the, the, the carbon dioxide produced from formate breakdown, can be ligated to a coenzyme used in methanogenesis called methanofuran. Methanofuran is actually going to be involved in the first step of methanogenesis, and we'll cover that in the next video. The other product of formate hydrogen lyase, or formate breakdown, is hydrogen gas, H2. Hydrogen gas will also be used in methanogenesis because it's going to be consumed by two types of enzymes. One of the types of enzymes is what generates an F420 in the reduced state. F420 is a type of molecule, it's a coenzyme very similar to heme, um, but it's named a little bit differently because it absorbs light at 420 nanometers, and it's actually going to be used to perform some uh, reductions um, in methanogenesis. Another molecule that's going to be used to do reductions in methanogenesis is ferrodoxin, which actually is present in humans. We may have seen that before in other videos. So the hydrogen can also be used to reduce ferrodoxin, which can then be used to reduce other things in methanogenesis. And so the ultimate goal of producing this hydrogen gas is going to be to generate a pool of reduced F420 and a pool of reduced ferrodoxin. So basically a reduced cofactor pool. And those that pool, or both of those pools, can be uh, drawn on in order to catalyze the, some of the reactions in methanogenesis. Now, the methane that's produced during methanogenesis is going to be released during flatulence. Or if we want to use common speak, it's farting. Okay, So flatulence is going to release some quantity of methane into the atmosphere. And so really the hydrogen gas is actually sort of a precursor to the methane because 
you cannot generate the methane unless you have plenty of hydrogen gas. Okay, So the same organisms that are actually going to be generating this hydrogen gas are also going to be using that hydrogen gas and the carbon dioxide in order to perform methanogenesis. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. But in any case, I hope this video made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.